New research shows why people of color may not want to exercise in public spaces and why black women are particularly vulnerable to pressures that might lead to less healthy lifestyles. Ray Sean Ray is a professor of sociology at the University of Maryland in College Park. He specializes in race, class, and gender, and he joins us now. Ray Sean Ray, welcome to the State of Things. Thank you for having me. Tony Carey is the co-founder of a group called Black Girls Run, and she joins us now as well. Hello, Tony Carey. Hi. And still with us is Rendell Smith, who's co-founder of the Wilmington-based group Black Man Running. Ray Sean Ray, uh, I want to talk with you about your research in a moment, but first give us a sense about the overall health of African Americans. We know there are some disparities. Tell us sort of how healthy communities are now around this United States. Sure. So, I mean, overall, I think when you look just at Americans in general, I think when we compare ourselves to other developing countries, um, we see that our health is, is not as good as others. When it comes to African Americans, it becomes even worse. I mean, we have higher rates of obesity, lower rates of physical activity, and that also comes with higher rates of chronic diseases, uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, the likelihood of strokes. Um, and so when we look at this a, as a whole, we see that there are issues as it relates to what it means to be black in society, partly because of some of the things that we've heard from Rendell. Um, and it also is coupled with the experiences that we have not only in public space, but at work, the types of neighborhoods that we live in. Um, most of the neighborhoods that African-Americans live in, we oftentimes don't have access to the types of uh, social resources and neighborhood resources that need to be available to actually live healthy and fulfilling lives. Uh, part of that means we have fewer parks, we have fewer gyms, we have fewer uh, healthy eating places. So you put all this together, and I think you, you said it earlier best, what we actually see is that exercising and being healthy in America is actually a privilege, and that's something that shouldn't be a privilege. Instead, it should be something that everyone should actually be able to take advantage of. And how do men and women differ, or do they, in African-American communities when it comes to these health markers? So so when we look, when we compare black women to black men, what we see is that it depends on the outcome we're looking at. So the work that I've done is primarily focused on middle class blacks and whites. And I focused on that group because we still see uh, health inequalities among blacks and whites, even at the middle class level. So I wanted to know why is why is a, a higher social class status? Why does having a bachelor's degree or having a good job and making good money or having a home? Why do these things not matter as much for the health of African Americans? And one factor I found is that it has to do with the neighborhoods that individuals live in. So, for example, for uh, for black men who live in predominantly white neighborhoods, what happens is that they're actually significantly less likely to engage in physical activity than if they live in predominantly black neighborhoods. Now, for black women, it's the exact reverse. For black women, we actually see that they are less likely to engage in physical activity in predominantly black neighborhoods. Now, the reason for these factors are different. For black women, it has to do with these with, with the normal things that we might think about, uh, safety and more so perceptions of safety. So as a sociologist, I'm concerned with, with perceptions and social psychological measures, and we find that even if a neighborhood is safe, if people perceive that it's not, then that's going to affect the type of activities you're engaging in in your neighborhoods. Um, the other thing that women deal with is male-dominated spaces. So when you have fewer physical facilities to actually engage in physical activity, say only one park in a neighborhood or one gym, they become male-dominated. For black men, they actually face stereotypes and criminalization in predominantly white neighborhoods. And this criminalization means that, as Rendell was just describing, I mean, it's not only people running away, but it's people calling the police, it's people, uh, it's people, it's people engaging engaging in certain types of activities that that actually deter people from engaging in physical activity. So for black men, they then go through a signaling process to try to signal that they belong. They engage in what we call impression management. They wear an, an alumnus T-shirt from the university. They always carry an ID. They run in places that are well lit. Things that you don't typically think about when you try to engage in exercise. And this leads to them being less likely to engage in physical activity.